Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, for your patience. We are ready to get started and excited to rock and roll. First off, thank you all for your time today and for joining us on the Service Tank and Review Buzz joint webinar, Crafting an Awesome Customer Service Experience, a conversation with home services companies. I'm Madison, and I'm a business development manager here at Service Titan. Now, before I introduce all our amazing speakers, I'd like to first introduce Service Titan. And once again, I want to make sure to point out that there's a question box. So if you have any questions during this webinar, please feel free to type it in, and we'll have somebody live responding to questions, checking in. So thank you, Reggie. Thank you so much for looking into the questions for our audience. So first and foremost, I'd love to introduce Service Titan. So Service Titan was founded eight years ago, and our co-founders, Bahe and Ara, are both, they come from families of contractors. They both have fathers in the contracting business, and they realized that their fathers did not have the best software, and they really wanted to build something outstanding. So Service Titan quickly caught on. And we've raised over $18 million in funding from one of the top VC companies, Bessemer. And they only invest in tech startups that are really poised for outstanding growth. With that said, you might, heard, you might have heard about some of their companies that they've invested in. LinkedIn, Yelp, just to name a few. So really, our main verticals here are HVAC, electrical, and plumbing. With that said, Service Titan really is the number one software platform for managing a home services business. It's not only powerful, but it's easy to use, and it really combines scheduling, dispatch, invoicing, sales, marketing, reporting, and much, much more in a mobile cloud-based platform. Next, I'd love to introduce you to Mike Montano, who will introduce Review Buzz. Hi, Madison. Yeah, thanks for uh, making this happen. I really appreciate it. We uh, at ReviewBuzz are super excited about the future, working with Service Titan, integrated with Service Titan. Um, you know, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been in the contracting business for over 20 years as a service contractor. Uh, I just recently sold about almost going on five months now, and um, now focusing exclusively on helping people with their online reputation. Um, ReviewBuzz is the system, a program, that helps you generate five-star reviews on the most important websites like Google, Yelp, Facebook, et cetera, through, you know, through your people. The people are what makes the whole process happen. And, um, you know, just being on this call today with some of the rock stars of the trades is an awesome opportunity, and I'm literally looking forward to getting started. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Next, I'd love to introduce our fabulous panelists and expert speakers today. First, we have Aaron Gaynor. Aaron is from Eco Plumbers. He's been in the plumbing trade since 1997 and has been a licensed master plumber since 2001. After working in industrial, commercial, and new construction plumbing, Aaron has made the decision to focus on residential service because he loved saving the day for his clients. Aaron founded the Eco Plumbers in 07 after developing a passion to find ways to save water and energy in residential. Through retrofit projects and aerator enhancements, it's estimated that Eco Plumbers has helped reduce water usage by 275 million gallons in California and Ohio. He's earned over 2,800 positive client reviews and has helped Eco Plumbers grow at the rate of 61% annually over the last three years. He holds weekly training sessions with both techs and office staff to really improve the customer and client experience and is eager to give back in a trade that has given him so many opportunities. Welcome, welcome, Aaron. We are so excited to have you. Next up is Thanks. Mr. Gino. Yes, you're welcome, of course. Next up, we have Mr. Gino Kacha of James Kacha Plumbing. Gino is the CEO of Kacha Plumbing, a second-generation business serving San Francisco and San Mateo County, California. His business is built on a solid reputation for performing high-quality plumbing service. Often referred by other plumbers to handle complex jobs, the Kacha family is always prepared to take on challenges and craft innovative solutions. The company excels in customer service and technical skills and ongoing employee enrichment classes to really develop the most highly skilled technicians with an authentic desire to take care of the customer. Making a difference moments are shared among the teams on a daily basis to provide a culture of caring. 
Gino also has a passion for sharing best practices within the plumbing industry. He is currently serving as the president of the Plumbing, Heating, Cooling Contractors, PHCC Association of California, and has twice served as the president of PHCC of San Francisco. He is committed to helping the industry improve through technology and best practices. Gino, we're so excited to have you. Welcome, welcome, Gino. Thank you, me too. Next up, we have Mr. Tyson Freeman of Lee's AC. Tyson Freeman is the general manager at Lee's AC and Plumbing in Fresno, California. Tyson started as a design engineer where he drew plans and performed load calculations. He earned an associate's degree in mathematics from Fresno City College and a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from California State University, Fresno. Prior to Lee's AC, Tyson worked as a customer service rep in many different industries, including telecom, food service, event planning, and insurance. Tyson also spent two years in Washington, D.C. on a volunteer trip with his church. He has been married for five years, his beautiful wife, Susie, and has two daughters, Maisie, who is four, and Adelaide, who is two. Welcome, Tyson. We are so excited to have you today. Thank you. Glad to be here. And lastly, we have Mike Montano, who is a former HVAC contractor and entrepreneur. He is an expert in service and internet marketing for local service businesses, and he is authority in the field of online reputation management. Mike is the author of Stop Marketing, Be Remarkable, and he's the CEO and Chief Visionary of ReviewBuzz, a software company dedicated to helping good people get five-star reviews on sites like Yelp, Google, Facebook, and more. Mike actually recently sold his company, 1-800-ANYTIME, so once again, congrats, Mike. We are so, so excited to have you here as well. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, let's get started on the questions. I know you guys are probably dying to hear what our experts have to say. So let's start off with the first question. How do you train your employees to deliver an awesome customer experience? Mike? Sure. Um, yes, yeah, so this is Mike. Uh, we, we um, at any time when we, we have our weekly meetings, one of the things that we common uh, we would do and have exercise. I believe a lot in, in having high engagement from the technicians. So they get bored really easy just listening to you talk. So one of the things that I did was, um, you know, one of our core values at any time was we care and it shows. And we would actually have the teams break into uh, teams of threes and fours and create lists on on the those sticky papers you put up on the wall on what that looks like to create that awesome customer experience. And having them come up with the ideas of what their vision of what their version of incredible customer experience really seemed to stick better than me trying to you know essentially shove it down their throat. Uh, and they had really cool ideas, you know, uh, things like you know pick up the newspaper before they walked in, a dog treat. So we buy the dog treats for the technicians that wanted them, that would give them out. Even one guy came up with the idea of bringing a cup of coffee to a customer um, on the first call of the day. So it, you'd be amazed on what the teams will come up with when you just simply ask them to be part of the solution. Wow, great. Thank you, Mike. Gino, would love to hear from you. Yeah, it's good stuff. Okay, uh, for us, it, it really starts with get, finding the right people. Um, so it starts all the way back to hiring for us, so people that can, can believe in and contribute to our culture. Um, and then from there, uh, we just create and craft training that's going to unlock their, their fullest potential. So we do that through personal goal setting. Um, we do a lot of trust uh, building between each other so they know how to like build trust with each other and that's a key component in getting customers to to trust us and, uh, and, and entertain the idea of a nice uh, solid review. Um, my people all know their purpose in the company. They're, uh, they're controlling the controllables. Um, and most of all, we just want them to make, we want that training to make a difference in their lives, meaning their, the quality of life is getting better. And uh, when, they, when they feel that themselves, they're actually invested in making a difference for the customer. So it's very, in our company, it's very employee focused first. And then uh, once they get that success, they, they want to spread it around. And if, they, if we all hit our fullest potential, the customers will shout from the rooftops on that experience. It's amazing stuff. Thank you for sharing, Gino. I'd love to jump to the next question. 
Do you collect or monitor any data to help you gauge the customer experience? What do you think about that, Tyson? Yeah, this is uh, Tyson from Lee's, and the customer experience is everything that drives our business. Without customers, we don't have jobs, we don't have a company. And so at Lee's, it's often um, said around the office, we're actually a customer service company. We just happen to be good at HVAC and plumbing. And so really, customer service comes first, and how do we track that? How do we gauge that? Um, we've used tools um, like ReviewBuzz, and I love what ReviewBuzz does because you don't just get the sugar-coated good reviews. You also get the, the feedback and the less positive reviews in the form of a survey where a customer can still share their thoughts and opinions without blasting it on the World Wide Web, and you can address that directly to that customer and then make it right from there. And then also we can see the amount of positive reviews that come in and use that positive reinforcement as training opportunities and as growth uh, mobility to see what are we doing well, what can we uh, excel at, and uh, what can we improve on. And then from there, uh, we also like to gauge our repeat business. Um, you know, the customers that are coming back to us time and time again, whether it's a maintenance customer or a, another plumbing leak that they've got going on, um, that means that we must have done something well to have them give us a call back. And so we like to track that. How are we doing at um, maintaining existing customers as well as growing and maintaining our growth? Got it. Thank you, Tyson, for those rich nuggets. Aaron, would love to hear from yeah. you. Those are great things right there. Um, we, we do things like uh, we go along, happy calls every single day. We call every client, no matter what the experience was, whether they purchased a service from us or not. We always call and engage and try to understand the, what the experience was, what can we do, what could we have done better. I think we also track client survey. We'll get those together. We've done some times where we'll kind of rate whether we have an A, a B, or C, and we've had Mike, our CFO, has taken those before and put them together, kind of really put together what our satisfaction is in the market. So we try to do that and get that information in front of people. We set team goals for reviews. So we have a team goal every month of how many reviews we want to get in the market to kind of understand how many, you know, what the experiences are happening for our clients out there. Another way to get involved is I just believe getting in the trenches with your team. Um, ride-alongs, listening to the calls, asking questions. The biggest thing I think I do to gauge what's going on is I take the customer complaints, if there is any, straight on. I have them send them to me. I, t I talk to the customer, listen to them, and try to gauge what is going on uh, anytime I can. And that's where I really get the pulse of what's happening out there. It's just getting in the trenches with my team. That's some great feedback. I love that. Really getting deep in the trenches and being with them, being on sites with them, on calls with them. Totally agree. Awesome. Let's move on to our next question. So what are some of the biggest challenges in providing an awesome customer experience? Mike, would love to hear more from you. I know you just sold your company, and so I'm sure you have a lot of experience with this. Yeah, both. Yeah, thank you. So, so both, obviously, with my past company, and, and uh, now that I'm, I'm surrounded by nothing but superstars in, in the service space because of review buzz, I have a really a mixed, um, actually, a much clearer understanding of what it what it comes down to. So, like a, what I'm hearing already on this call, you know, a lot of it comes down to your team members. Um, the right team will end up creating you know the, the, the brand that you always wanted for your business. And creating uh, that is you know, obviously challenging when you have people that have different values and different different things they care about. And one thing that I, I look back at my 20 years in business and I look at I, I look at ways I could have done better, and I realize that you know I really really put a lot of emphasis on culture to the point where I almost felt it was like my family, and that got too emotional for me, which made it hard for me to let people go or be harder on on individuals that weren't producing the right results for their customer. I essentially put my people in front of my customers because I got too focused on simply making the culture rich and healthy when in fact it wasn't healthy because I was giving people too much slack to maybe show up late or maybe slack to not show up at all and not you know, recommend them and, and you know and, and possibly change them out with someone that didn't care enough to, to put the customer first. So at the end of the day, you know, I think it comes down to, you know, we're all here as, as owners of businesses. Really, we should be in it to win it, right? We should be building a sports team, not a recreational team. And, uh, you know, as far as the challenges, it's always it comes down to the people and the culture you create isn't simply about, you know, having healthy, you know, 
fun, you know, events for the company, for the individual people to feel they are cared for. That's a big part of it, don't get me wrong. But equally important is when someone does make a mistake that they're treated, you know, in a way that, you know, is professional. If, if a guy's not pitching well, what do you do? You pull him out of the game. You know, if a guy's not, you know, his, his uh, you know, at bats aren't doing well, you know, you pull him out of the, off the, the, the list, you know, of, 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 out of a lineup. So I think, you know, treating your, your company more like a professional team than you do a rec team is really key to building a more successful uh, customer service experience. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Mike. And Aaron, do you have anything to add? Would love to hear from you. Uh, yeah, I think it's just important that your team actually has a clear vision of what you want. You know, they can't provide an excellent service experience if they don't know what it is. So it's got to be very clear. Explain the journey, explain what it is, what your expectations are. And I agree with Mike there. you got to hold them accountable. And I think that's the challenge for all of us sometimes in small businesses because you do build these relationships with these guys and these employees. And sometimes you can become a little more soft than you should. But the client experience needs to be really good. And culture is, 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 is part of that, building the culture that everybody clearly understands the vision of what that is. I think another thing that we run into too is just getting the guys to, and not just the guys, the whole team, set the agenda with the client so the client knows what to expect throughout this process and then let the client experience unfold through the agenda. So if you don't set the agenda and you get there, you're talking to the client, then you can't let your experience unfold in front of them. And ultimately too, just having empowered and confident people in your team. They just, they know what to do, how to do it, and build confidence in them. They can't do anything if they're not confident in themselves. And I always run into this too, is the guys always, guys on service technicians always want to fix the problem before they fix the client. So they need to be clear that, you know, they've seen the problem a hundred times before, but it might be this client's first time, first time ever dealing with whatever what this is. So they need to be focused on not the problem, they need to be focused on the client and really getting them to understand how to improve that experience with the client, because they'll be able to fix the problem. At least they should, or they shouldn't be a service technician. But so really that's the areas we focus on is just looking at the client more often than just the problem. Got it. That's some great feedback, looking more at the client and not just as a problem. Okay, so with that said, you know, in your experience, what are some of the best ways to actually motivate your technicians to provide a stellar experience, to really go above and beyond? Gino would love to hear from you. This is my favorite part. This is where the, you know, the, we get traction, rubber is the road, those things. So it's, yeah, we, we really talk about it as it's the culmination of their experience. It's their time to shine and really, really set themselves apart in front of that customer to really show their training, show who they are. Um, so they, they make it personal. But um, the, the one thing, we, we get them programmed or, you know, uh, in the mindset of loving the accolades from the customers. And that recognition is super powerful. I mean, that's, it transcends money and all kinds of other things. So the first, the first thing we do to build that is the respect among their peers in the workplace um, to make that good behavior repeat. But um, the thing we brought on to add, added fuel to that was um, we bring that success home for them. So we show their families and friends. Um, if they can get the respect and accolades from their family and friends, then that's a home run. Um, we do that through Facebook, social media, we get them, you know, telling their story and, and just these, these great things they did. And then it's just amazing to watch the engagement from their family and friends on on, uh, on the videos and the comments they make. And they're super proud of them. I know that's, that's something money can't buy. And if you get that, uh, if, if, we're all, if we're all operating at peak potential, we'll, we'll be unstoppable. I agree. Thank you for sharing, Gino. It's really... Um really that that will allow you to be unstoppable really being able to share that really celebrate that and um, you know really commemorate that awesome Tyson what do you think you know is there anything you'd like to add to that yeah yeah I really like Gino's comments there um, helping them take ownership of it uh, when I'm looking at motivation for these guys to provide that experience I'm looking at a couple different things I'm looking at the short-term motivation as well as the long-term motivation you know, what's going to get them through today and what's going to get them through five years from now. And so we, we've got a couple things in place that we do to help out with that. And, uh, you know, incentives are huge for the guys. And there's, there's times that you need an incentive now, you get that instant gratification, and there's times where the delayed incentive helps out. So we actually do both. For each review that they get on a uh, public-facing website, 
we'll, we'll give them a spiff. And along with this cash spiff, we'll also provide them with a ball. And what this ball is, at the end of the year, it goes into a drawing or a raffle. And we'll have a year-end party at the close of our fiscal year. And we'll buy a bunch of prizes for the guys. We'll have TVs, iPads, Apple Watches, tons and tons of gifts. And all these balls are in a big bingo jar. And so what we'll do is throughout the year, they're accruing these balls. And we'll go through and we'll select them and they can win these prizes with, you know, each prize gets larger and larger as the day goes on. Um, so that's that's a midterm um, motivation because it doesn't come right now, but you have to gain the balls today in order to have them at the end of the year. And then as far as long-term motivation goes, just the focus that the customers are the lifeblood of our company. You realize if they're happy now, they're going to want us back in their home. We often have customers requesting specific service specialists to come back to their home. So if you're providing that excellent, stellar experience, that's job security. That's going to be able to provide for your family more than that little spiff today or that, that new TV at the end of the year, but it's that longevity of it. Tyson, thank you for sharing. I love that. I love how you have incentives, but you know, you also really make sure that they all know really the long-term value of this, the job security and the fun little, you know, the bingo jar. You, it sounds like you guys make it a really great culture um, and really have some really varied and fun incentives for everybody. Awesome. So moving forward, I'd love to hear about, you know, how do you deal with technicians who are having bad days? And, you know, that ultimately really affects the customer experience. So how does that affect the customer experience? You know, how do you fix something like this? What what do you guys do about this? Um, it's inevitable and it's something that always happens, but it's, it's important that we find the right way to deal with it and to fix it. So Tyson would love to hear from you. Yeah, in my opinion, you've got to address these bad days before they have a bad day. And what I mean by that is have that relationship with each individual uh, service specialist and acknowledge their good days. Have that relationship with them so that uh, when that bad day does come up, you're not being reactive, but you're being proactive. You've already established the relationship with them and you can remind them, hey, remember that good day we had last week? Remember that day you got five reviews in one day? Oh, yeah, that, that's good. Whereas if you went to them without having that previous relationship, it just looks superficial and you're trying to address the situation here and now and there's not that um, enduring longevity relationship. Um, so I see it as you got to be proactive. And you've really got to help them out uh, in, on an individual basis. And how does that affect the customer experience? There's a couple different things I look at there because in order to deliver a, an ex experience more than just a good experience you've got to do things that are above and beyond I mean there's often times our guys will do things that aren't in the job description like fence a, fix a fence gate uh, latch or clear out their rain gutters with of the leaves those are things that they're just doing to go above and beyond and if they're having a bad day I doubt that's going to happen they're not going to feel like serving someone else that much um, so that's what I've got to say about that Tyson, thank you so much for sharing. Um, one of my biggest takeaways here is really to be able to encourage them and motivate them by focusing on the positivity and reinforcing that and focusing on the good days and reminding them of all the great things they've done and you know all the great experiences. Thank you, Tyson. And Mike, I'd love to hear from you. Sure. <clears throat> So I, I, I remember uh, times rolling into my shop, and I'm sure some of you guys know what I'm talking about, um, and one of your best technicians' truck is unexpectedly parked and uh, there and waiting for you. And I walk in, and the guy's looking at me, and uh, he's such ready to turn in his keys, and I'm like, um, are you going to break up with me? And <laughs> those moments where, you know, when naturally they're having a bad day and I tend, you know, from looking back at 20 years in business, starting from one truck to, you know, we grew it to over um, 20 trucks, it really, um, um, you know, what, what I realized is that sometimes I had it coming, you know, we worked the guys too long, we weren't paying attention to their schedules, um, you know, with, at, at certain parts of our, um, of, of the 20 years I was doing it, I had guys on pure commission. So their revenues would go up and down, and their their inability to you know have a steady paycheck wasn't there for them. So we collect a lot of those things along the way, and you know 
I think to a lot what you know um, Tyson was, was was sharing right now is you know it, you got to be you know uh, proactive about a lot of these things and I think things that will reduce those bad days are you know when it was hot in the summertime we would deliver ice cream to the guys you know uh, we would always make sure that they had plenty of bottled water you know we would um, <clears throat> when they came in the office you know we would sometimes give them a standing ovation the entire office for showing up, you know, because they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're working their butts off when the seasons are, are at its peak. Um, you know, in, in the day, you know, they got to feel cared for, you know, not just uh, inside the, 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 you know, the business, but in more importantly, outside the business. You know, I remember times where we would send flowers to their wives, um, you know, so things like that that you can do to create a stronger relationship with these guys because they really have it, have it tough. I mean, all of you most likely have been in the trades. I mean, I remember when I was in a truck by myself and underneath the house and having to deal with dead rats and all the spiders and dead animals left and right and, you know, raw sewer and up in super hot attics. I mean, gosh, it's, it's, it's rough being a technician, right? And then you got to sell on top of all that. So I think we got to remind ourselves as managers and owners of these businesses that these technicians really uh, put out a lot to, to, to be in this, in, this business, in this business. So being proactive and, and really showing remarkable care for the employees will, will avoid some of those bad days. Mike, thank you so much for sharing. You're right. You know, it's it's such a tough job, and we really do have to um, give that remarkable care. You know, every day um, to kind of almost prevent those bad days and make those bad days less bad. So, thank you, thank you, Mike, for sharing. I'd love to talk about the next question. Um, what's the best story you've heard from a customer about one of your texts? Um, I'm sure we have many, many stories, so I'd love to hear um, some of your favorite stories. And Aaron, I'd love to start with you. So I was going to dig into the, all the calls and talk about all the great things that guys have done, but I came in here today and I had a letter on my desk. Um, and it says, Mike belongs to the old school of listening and problem solving that small business entities with longevity display. This was written from a customer today that was on my desk this morning when I came in. And, uh, you know, those are the little things just in general to hear that you're, that the people in your staff will take the time to listen and problem solve with them. So just having somebody take the time to write this letter alone just shows that they appreciate what we've done. Also today, just had a guy come in, Bobby, uh, one of our service technicians, was at a customer's house and I was doing some work for them. And then they were talking talking about having their roof drains. I don't know if every market has roof drains areas where the, you know, from the roof uh, rains off into the street. And he was mentioning that he was going to have a company that gave him a price of around $1,700 to do this repair and it needed to be done and that the drains were broke. And he said, why don't I do you a favor while I'm here? I've got my camera. Why don't I drop, a, drop the camera in here and take a look at it with you so at least you know what's going on? Because he asked him, did they, did, you, did they camera it for you? And he said, no. Cameraed it for him, wide open line not a single break in the line. So then he said, well, let's fill it with water. Let me flush it, make sure I'm good. Flushed it, done, saved the guy $1,700 from somebody being unhonest about a repair. So, you know, those are the things that we instill in our guys is just be honest, build no like and trust, do the right thing. And those are the type of stories that come back our way. And our guys do spend a lot of time. I've had guys call me and ask me if they could go take care of a client that they felt was um, in a lower income situation and said they'd be willing to do it on their own time and I tell them no problem I'll be willing to provide the parts for you and we've done some of that stuff for clients so just the guys just caring at the end of the day I think is really the stories I have. Thank you Aaron for sharing um, what a serendipitous thing you know having that letter on your desk today right before the webinar how great. Gino um, I'd love to hear from you um, I know you guys get a ton of really great stories and I've heard a couple previously before today, uh, but would love to hear about one of your favorites. Do you know? So we, uh, we we get we thrive on these stories. We I mean we really it just keeps our juices flowing. We had we had one that I, you know I shared with you yesterday on a phone call that came in, um, setting the scene. Um, very busy guy, venture capitalist, um, ten bathroom house, has a personal assistant for his home life and his work life. Um, this guy was so ecstatic um, over the like over the last eight years or so. He's he's used us um, and always requested one technician, right, uh, Joe. And Joe was on vacation the last two weeks and he had an urgent need. And our office got a, got him on the line, 
you know, asked how he can, you know, make him smile today. The guy was, his assistant was like, okay, well, you know, Peter really needs this to get done, and, and uh, but he really wants Joe, as you know, and, and well, Joe's on vacation, so we have Ofa. So there can't be another Joe. There can't be another Joe in this world that's that caring, that skilled, that care, you know, like this, they can deliver. Um, so our office team convinced him to give him a shot, and um, it was so curious to this very busy guy um, that there could be another one of these people in this world uh, that uh, he actually was part of the call when when my guy was there servicing. He, his assistant was there, met my guy, but this high-level guy came out to see what this was all about. Well, Opa delivered. It culminated in a phone call later where you know, it brought Diane, our call center manager, to tears. It brought my mom to tears when I when I played it for her this morning. You know, I got goosebumps every time I hear it. So that stuff, like, I'm pumped now for for the rest of the year. It can ride that wave. But uh, that that's really what we live for. It's just a chance to really show people when people acknowledge that they see our efforts play out. It gets very real, and it makes us want to do it again. It's like a drug. So that's my story. Thank you, Gino, for sharing that um, heartwarming story. Um, some of our folks here at Service Titan also had an opportunity to listen, and we were blown away um, by your anecdote um, and that tale. So I'm really grateful you had the chance to share it with all of us today. Um, thank you, Gino. Moving forward, I'd love to talk about online reviews. I know this is really important for us in all our different businesses. You know, so how do you team engage with these online reviews? You know, how do you motivate them with these reviews? Are you reading them out loud? Do you post it on the wall, kind of like in a scoreboard so everybody can see? Are you putting it on a TV screen? Um, would love to hear more. Tyson, would you be able to share more about what you guys are currently doing? Absolutely. Um, it's pretty simple but very effective. What we do is every time we get a new review um, through Review Buzz, we get that email or if it's outside of review buzz, we're constantly monitoring these new reviews as they come in. As, as they come in, one of our CSRs will type up an email and put everyone in the company on the email and they'll blast it out. And not just sharing the review, but they'll share which website it was on, what the review said, who the customer was, who was mentioned in the review, they'll highlight the names, and it's awesome to see the response from everyone else in the company. I mean, you get a lot of attaboys and good jobs and keep it up. And, and it not only shows that, that person that received the review that we care, but it also shows them that their teammates care as well and therefore motivates the other team members because they want to get that recognition too. And so that's been very effective for us. We do it for 100% of our new online reviews. And fortunately, that email is going out multiple times a day. And the other thing that we'll do for standout reviews is we'll put it on our flat screen TV that's constantly cycling through in the training room and it's going 24-7. So anyone that walks in through the office, whether it's a customer, a potential employee, or existing employees, they get to see these shout outs and, oh yeah, that was me. Oh, that's my name. Oh, I remember that customer. And so we're showing them those are the, the ex excellent reviews. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Tyson. Um, Mike, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, it's, it's super excited to be on this call and listen to the superstars uh, tell their stories, and I agree with every one of them, and um, there's, a, there's so much to learn from this. Um, you know, for me, I, I think one of the things that I've learned more recently than, than, than ever is the importance of um, making sure that the guys know why. You know, why is this important? Important of them, and one of the things that I found is, is a great tool to use is to give the guys the understanding that the online review, the customer who's telling these great stories, you're now captioning as a permanent record, and that permanent record, that profile that's on their review that goes to the customer in advance, that's the ultimate tool that they can they can use in a, in a sales presentation, and that's a way to earn more money for themselves and for their families. And I, I really emphasize the importance of leveraging that and making sure that they know when they start accumulating those reviews, that's going to be the way they're going to be able to outsell their competitor. I mean, most, you know, the guys are on this call, they know that they're not, there's not everyone not using review buzz. There's very few selective companies that believe in the philosophy of what we're doing. And the idea that, you know, the people delivering the experience is really the what, step, what, what makes this whole thing possible. And that's why we 
we're seeing such success with the guys on the call today. And, and I think the, you know, getting the technicians clear on that, you know, once they start leveraging those reviews and showing their customers, hey, Mr. Jones, before I even get started today, I just want to let you know my job is to, you know, is, is to deliver the best customer experience possible. In fact, if I could just show you what I'm really proud of is look at these reviews that I, I've accumulated. And I'm really proud of these reviews that are on Facebook and Google and Yelp. And with, uh, you know, with my job today is, is, to, is to make you one, one of those kinds of customers. So when you, when you get the guys to really understand how valuable this is for them and when it impacts their paychecks and their pocketbook, you're going to get them to really start to pay attention, and they'll realize that real quickly that it is in fact true that they have to deliver that excellent customer experience. That they want to have that ultimate tool that separates them from their competitors. Um, so you know, again, it, it, when it impacts their paycheck, the guys start to really lean in and start to really pay attention. Thanks for sharing, Mike. We really appreciate it. So I'd love to dive into this more. You know. As a review buzz and service heightened customer, you know what are some of the ways that the software has really helped you to, de to deliver that awesome experience for your customers? And Gino, I'd love to start with you and hear some about your feedback. Absolutely. Um, you know, both Service Titan and Review Buzz offer an elegant solution for us to have the right information um, at our fingertips. So. One of my mentors growing up in business here said chance favors the prepared mind, which means, you know, there is not really luck. The lucky, the lucky guys are the ones that are putting themselves in the position to be successful. And that's what that's what the information in service Titan does. And then they can listen to the call ahead of time. They can they can hear the customer's voice on the sense of urgency and they can do that all from their iPad. That's hugely powerful. Um, for a review buzz, it actually does get <laughs> It really shows who the leaders are in setting a great experience for the customer because when you print that summary report on, I get mine on Thursdays, but you can see, and that gets that gets put up for everybody to see. But you see, you know, Ofa is at the top. We have Joseph, number two. We have those those guys have just been pushing up, and it, it ranks them by cumulative, right? So that's their track record. That's who they are. They aren't having these uh, variable commitment moments. They're they're all in on that experience and. And my leaders uh, love to be the leaders, and my guys that are just below them love to push those guys off the off the totem pole. And uh, we want to be really good here about making our C players B players and our B players A players, and move them on up. And that's happening with this with these two products combined. So thank, thank you, you for great. sharing, Gino. Yeah. Awesome, Aaron. Would love to hear feedback from you. Look, I think Service Titan is just a powerful operational system. It's uh, it just keeps getting better. Um, I've been with you guys for a few years now. <clears throat> I love the fact that you can take the pictures, you can load videos. You know, we have the guys now even shooting videos while they're doing the calls with the clients, so we have all the history immediately, and then loading that in. The customer history is there. You can you can uh, do pricing fast. The presentation on 2.0 is awesome. I mean, it just adds about it just adds value. It just you look more professional in the field when you can do all these things. You've got the information from conversion you can right away for the guys. We, we post conversion. We're very big on conversion. So all the information is inside of Service Titan, and it just keeps building and building, and there's so many ways to do different things inside Service Titan. I could probably go on forever. But, uh, you know, it's it's just a great tool. It's been it's been very helpful. I've enjoyed my experience with Service Titan. Um, every, ever since I first met Ara two years ago, he's been an amazing guy. He's helped me out so much. Um, and all the great staff at Service Titan is just awesome. I, I visit you guys a couple of times. I think I've been out there maybe three, about four times, and everybody is just great, fun, good people, always open for new ideas and growing. So, I mean, I can't think that you could ask for anything more than that from a system that you're using every day. Uh, Review Buzz, I mean, it's it's great. I mean, the the bio goes out, the pictures go out of the guy. I mean, there's a little story or history about them. The reviews are going straight out in front of the clients, so the guys have to own those reviews every single day now. Um, so I think it just shows the client that you really care about your reputation as a company. So with that being said, I mean, it just holds the guys accountable because they get the reviews every single day. So review us is great. It's, 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 it's like Mike said, it's just powerful because it allows the guys to have this ability with the clients for credibility 
from reviews and other people immediately about them, not just about the company. So it really creates a cred credibility for the technicians in the field, and they have to own that. And Mike has been amazing, too. I've met with Mike and I met a while back. We spat, sat and chatted maybe for an hour or so, Mike, I think, one night, just talking about life and business and stuff, and he's just been great to deal with. We text and talk, and everybody at, at Review Buzz is good. So I, I just enjoy working with the two companies because there's just a lot of good people there uh, that are ambitious and inspire and help to grow small businesses like myself. So thank you. Thank you very much. Aaron, thank you. Thank you for all those sweet and wonderful words. Um, we, you know, we've worked very hard and we absolutely adore all our customers and so thank you, thank you. Um, so just a quick reminder for the entire audience, um, we are getting ready to take Q&A questions very, very soon. We have a couple more questions, but then we'll be ready to take some questions from the audience. So please submit your questions. Um, we want to make sure that we answer them and get to them. So please don't forget to submit your questions in the question box, and we will try our best to answer all of them. Um, next question. So for the listeners out there wondering how they can enhance their the experience for all of their customers, you know, what is one piece of advice that you can give them today? Um, Mike, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. And Aaron, thanks, man. It feels mutual. You're, you're uh, a rock star and you, you inspire me in a lot of ways, man. So it's a great relationship. Thanks for saying such nice things about us and Review Buzz. We appreciate it. <clears throat> you know, being in the trade for 20 years and, and looking back and looking forward and, and seeing, you know, kind of the evolution of, of things, how they're going, it, it definitely, we all need to know what strategy to take in order for us to go where we need to go. I mean, all of us need to be thinking about where the puck is going, not where the puck has been, you know, Wayne Kresge said it. Um, and I think what we're hearing today, underlining what, what you're hearing is about, it's, it's all about caring, right? Caring about your employees, caring about your customers, and of course, caring about your brand, you know, the online reviews, your online reputation. And, um, you know, it's not just caring is not enough. It's got to be remarkable care, like things you heard today, you know, the, 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 the passion that's in uh, all of us that brought us in the trade. Um, I remember as a tradesman, I used to put my level on, on my water pipes because I wanted my work to look perfect, look, look like, you know, like a professional was there, even after they drywalled over it. Um, <clears throat> You know, it's it's really important that we, we care about our, our, our craft, we care about our career, we care about our employees, because all that leads to what? It leads to our customers feeling cared for, and once our customers feel cared for, they'll care for our brand. So when you think about it, it's, it's about caring for your people, they'll care for your customer, and your customer will, will take care of your brand. So that strategy is a strategy that I think is, is the winning combo. It's the formula to success, and it's the only way to reach success because it, it, they all piggyback on top of each other, and you can't get a good online review without an employee who not only cares about the customer, but who cares about the company enough to say, yeah, I want to recommend that company that I work for because that company I work for is the best company, and I want other customers to, to get the same experience that this customer got. So a, a customer advocate, I'm sorry, an employee advocate comes first, um, when you think about it, so just carrying all the way through and having that remarkable care is really, really critical to the strategy of, of winning online and winning um, in today's marketplace. Mike, thanks for sharing. Really appreciate that. And Tyson, um, do you have anything to add? Would love to hear your perspective as well. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate that, Mike. Um, if I had to to pick one piece of advice for this, I, I would I think it boils down to leading by example. Um, I don't want to ask my guys or my gals in the office to do anything that I myself wouldn't be willing to do. I've got to lead by example in a couple different ways. In my interactions with the individual service specialist, I need to show them that I care about them and I care about their work um, for our customers. I'm not the one running the calls every day. I'm not the one in the hot attics. I'm not the one under the houses. Um, but I need to show them, too, that I do care about them. Um, I also need to show them if they have troubles with a customer, I'm not going to step in and, and take it away and be the hero and uh, step on his toes. But I need to empower him to say, hey, you've got all the tools you need. You're a great customer service specialist. Um, you can take care of it. And so we have guys out there making decisions on the fly, and sometimes it's a gift card, and sometimes it's waving a diagnostic 
quick fee, but I'm okay with that within reason as long as it's getting us to the end goal. We share that vision that was mentioned earlier. And so if I'm showing them through all the decisions that I make in the business that I care about them, I care about people, and when it comes down to it, we've got a, a banner in our office that says people above protocol. Yes, we do charge a diagnostic fee to come out. Is that 100% of the time? Yes, except for those times when there's an issue or, hey, I'm going to do this $10,000 project with you. Work with me here. If he was to follow protocol, that would be a $99 charge and no install. Have a good day. But we look at it on the customer level. And you know what? Let's do this. Let's get you taken care of. I'll get you a portable cooling unit out in the meantime while you're down until we're able to get you installed. Um, going above and beyond for them, it starts with you. Wow, Tyson, thanks for sharing. One of the things that really resonated with me was the people above protocol. I think that's a really important kind of statement um, to, to really share with everybody and remind everyone very often. Um, so thank you, Tyson, for sharing that. That was really, um, that was very good. Um, I would love to open it up for some Q&A time. Um, first and foremost, I would love to ask Mike to please quickly remind us um, how Reviews Buzz works and what Reviews Buzz is. We have had a couple of um, audience members really interested and excited, and they just wanted to learn more. So, Mike, I'd love for you to share with us a little bit more. Sure. So, I, I think that the easiest way to explain Review Buzz is kind of like Carfax for people. Um, it, it really helps give the consumer the ability to see not just the brand of the company, but the brand of the individual. I mean, that's really one of the most um, powerful parts of our system is that it enhances your employees' um, ability to take that customer and create a permanent record. So they all get their own profile as being part of Review Buzz, which obviously helps the company because naturally the consumer wants to deal with the best people possible. Um, but our, our brand promise and what we really, uh, you know, are, are why, we, why we are in business is because we want to help deliver the most reviews on the sites that matter most for our customers. Um, and you know, there's a whole lot of uh, parts to our program that makes that possible, makes that happen. And, uh, you know, it's, it's in the day, you know, all of us know the power of reviews, the power of, of, of these positive things being said about your business because it changes the dynamic in the business. In fact, one of the things I hear more than, more than often than not is not just about the reviews, but how it changes the culture and how your people are now more focused on positivity because they're getting the positivity finally. Um, before review buzz, they may not have gotten the feedback to their emails like they do now, or be a survey or be a review. Be a review. So if there's a whole lot to. I'm sorry, I, it's hard, I don't want to give it, go too long winded on that that answer, but um, you know, just give us you know a call and we'll be glad to run you through the product and show you what it can do for you. Thank you, Mike, for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Um, that's definitely helpful and um, really clarifies a little bit. I'd love to ask. You know, what is the best way to handle negative reviews? And this is open to any, um, any of our four speakers and not just Mike. Um, so would anybody like to take this one? Do you know I can, I can uh, chime in, on, I can chime in on, on one one core principle for us is just to be, be authentic with the customer. So, you know, we, um, a lot of times you have to own the mistake. You made the mistake. Yes, yes we made a mistake. We're sorry. What can we do to fix it? It's, we're just trying to be people, and we're not trying to be perfect. We're just trying to be people. So that usually disarms most situations. And my other go-to is if you just give me the time to talk, I guarantee you'll leave the conversation happy. Mm. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. So it's having that integrity and just saying, you know, hey, oops, sorry, maybe we did do this. Let us fix it. Awesome. Can I add one thing too? Is this, I think that one of the things that we all need to take consideration is the best review is a negative review that turned positive. So when you have that upset customer, um, you know we always had uh, gift baskets from Amazon on on demand, ready to go. So when that negative review came through, we would you know be able to handle that. And oftentimes I'd go out personally as an owner and and try to uh, you know show the, show my my people that I'm willing to go out there and do this tough tough work. Other times I, I get my employees to do the gift basket delivery, but at the end of the day, we always, almost always, 100% of the time, get a response, and they would tell the whole story of how far we went to make things right for that for their experience. So, um, 
oftentimes we, we think of it as a bad thing, but it really show, gives you an opportunity to really shine and separate it from, the, from your competition. Because no one wants to read a bunch of nothing but positive reviews. They want to know that there's some, there's some truth to the reviews. And, and obviously no one's perfect, so having a perfect reputation isn't realistic for a consumer. So if you really want to um, create that perfect reputation, you've got to have a mixture of, of good and bad. But when the bad happens, go way farther than an ordinary. Be really remarkable in that, in that, that respect. Thank you for sharing. I love that. Really reframing that. You know, how do we turn bad to good and then going the extra mile to really deliver that 100%. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'd love to move on to the next question from the audience. What do you do for trust building in customers? I'll take a stab at that. This is Tyson from Lee's. Um, what we've seen in the service industry is that there's a lot of customers out there that have had a once bad experience or multiple bad experiences with a service um, industry representative uh, coming into their home and either disrespecting it or something bad has gone wrong there. And so they're, they're already starting, you know, you're starting behind the eight ball. They're, they're into it like, okay, what's he going to mess up this time? And so you take that extra minute to notice a picture on their wall, talk to them about their family, you know, talk to them about their dogs and their cats. I mean, the simplest things, um, we put on shoe cover booties every home we go into, and that, you know, kind of piques their interest. Wait a minute, are they actually respecting my home? And then they start wondering, okay, what else do you do? And those are probably the customers that are going to follow you around and look over your shoulder at everything you do. And, oh, wow, he, he put this drop cloth over my clothes, so insulation didn't fall out on it from the, uh, the roof hatch. And so... It's those little things, taking the time to show them we're not your typical HVAC company that may have come in here and disrespected you in the past. Um, but again, focusing on the customer service. And until they're fully comfortable and very satisfied, um, we're not going to leave there and, until they've overcome those, those once untrusted um, premonitions from other companies. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tyson. So I'd love to dig into more about what we spoke about earlier when we talked about these trust-building exercises with the staff and with the team. You know, could we throw out some ideas to implement, um, you know, some specific examples that our audience members can take away? Uh, I, this is Aaron with Eco Plumbers. I, mean, I just think it's important that the clients, you're building the old no like and trust. So how do you do that? Again, you heard me mention before setting the agenda with the client so they understand what to expect and then letting that experience unfold and making sure that you're hearing them and you're listening to them correctly, not waiting to talk over the top of them or be on the expert and start, you know, telling them what they should have and what they should do. Really understanding their needs and wants and then hearing them all the way through. Ask really good questions the whole time you're there. Also, like you said, get to know them, get to know their family, get to know everything that's going on with them, and then build options that fit their needs and let them make the decision that best fits them and their family and not feeling like they're in a take it or leave it situation every single time. And since we've been doing that for the last couple of years, it's really, really helped us build a lot, of, lot more trust with our clients. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, we are coming to an end and getting ready to wrap up. So I want to thank you for all of your answers and all of your questions. Um, and thank you so much to our wonderful expert speakers for their time. Um, I want to remind everyone in the audience that the webinar will be recorded and is available within 24 hours after we finish. Um, with that said, I'd love to tell you more about how we can all stay in touch and stay engaged. We have an upcoming webinar um, in just a couple weeks where we'll be sharing inside secrets about how some of our biggest enterprise clients have achieved exponential growth and really share tips with mid-sized shops and how they can grow their businesses even further with Service Titan. So please look out for the email invite in your inboxes soon. We can't wait to invite you to that webinar and give you some more handy dandy secrets that you can implement every day. Um, also, Mike has shared a ton of phenomenal feedback with us and if you'd like a free copy of his book, Stop Marketing, Be Remarkable, from the CEO of Review Buzz himself, 
please feel free to send him a quick note. His email is mike at reviewbuzz, all one word, dot com. Once again, that's mike at reviewbuzz, dot com. So feel free, send him a quick note, and you'll get a copy of his remarkable book. So I just want to thank you guys again for all of your time. A big round of applause to our speakers, Gino, Aaron, Tyson, and Mike. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, and expertise. We adore you all, and thank you, thank you to our, all of our attendees and our audience for your time as well.